like to go back to the um, the playoff 2019 between Clemson and Ohio State and, of course, the controversial calls that were made. Um, I just wonder, how, do you have any idea how they picked the officiating crew for those games? That's a great question. I know that they just have an officiating crew that's not – um, represented by one of the teams. So that was an SEC crew, if I'm not mistaken. Mm. But it it's, was. It, yeah, it they, they, all was. Get, they all get rated and graded. So th- they're supposed to be the very best that go to the playoff. Now, I don't know, mm. to answer your question, I don't know if that's the best crew or those are the best individuals and they made a new crew. So I don't know if that's an all-star right, team right. or that's the best crew. Yeah, I have no idea. I just, it just seems to me like when you have a dog in a fight, it probably shouldn't be officiating the game that's going to lead to that. You know what I'm saying? The uh, the Clemson, uh, Ohio State. I mean, I honestly believe that they, I made them wrong, call me crazy. But I wonder, I can't help it, because I'm a, like you, I'm a huge Ohio State fan. And I have to wonder if, if they saw how dominant Ohio State was against Clemson, and I thought, geez, you know what? They might beat LSU uh, in the championship game, which they might. Not because it, uh, I think Ohio State was necessarily better than uh, LSU. They are probably as good, I think. But um, but they did have a van- one little advantage that they had Joe Burrow. They knew what he was like. They probably knew weaknesses. But, you know, you can't help that you play with somebody for years. They're going to know something about it. Anyways, uh, so I just wonder if the whole thing, um, you know, I just wonder if it was on the up and up because some were terrible calls. They had three terrible calls. You know, they said the scooping, scooping score after the after the, the attack that got uh, knocked out of the uh, receiver's hands and uh, the targeting call and, uh, you know, the last one. And, and all those calls that ended up uh, in Clemson scores, which changed the uh, force of the game. So, um, you know, I, I just like to see all officiating be a little more. I hate to say it, but fair. It just seemed to me like that there was, for some reason, that game, I don't know. I mean, it wouldn't, it wouldn't be hard to believe if that SEC officiating crew wanted to uh, win that game. Maybe I'm wrong. Well, but that's how I, feel about uh, it. I think that there's um, reason to, so you got a conspiracy theory working there, and certainly there were bad calls made. There were, you can you can say that they were bad, you can say they were questionable. I'm going to say they range from questionable to bad. You had Sean Wade getting thrown out of a game for targeting. It was targeting, but on the same play, there were other, I've seen video of this. I've seen close-up pictures of a face mask that was like two feet away from Sean Wade, where I think Chase Young was, was there was a face mask. There should have been, there could have been offsetting penalties on that play, if they would have called all the penalties that were wow. presented in front of them. So, yeah, I, w- so you had a bad Sean Wade, who was Ohio State's better, well, second best cover corner to Jeffrey Okuda at the time. So you know how much of a damaging blow that was to Ohio State to lose uh, one of the best players in their defense. And that that, right. was, yeah. that was, what, third and 16 or something? You know, Clemson was stopped again. Yeah. They were getting shut out. There was only what, like four minutes left in the first half. And that's right. They, you know, were, they were going to have to punt. Ohio State was going to get the ball back. Most likely it was going to be 16 to nothing at half. Um, so was that a bad targeting call? No, I, I don't think it was a bad call. I think I've seen calls. It was one of those situations where the rule targeting was not applied correctly it was not stated correctly it was ridiculous to think that sean wade when trevor lawrence ducked his head down at the last second could avoid that type of contact and so you had that absolutely call. and that but that happens that happens in a lot of the targeting calls you know where sure. the, the, the person they're trying to tackle just happens to uh, you know, duck down at the last second, you know, and so that, that's the course the targeting call is so uh, uh, speculative that anyhow that it's, it's really hard to, to sometimes it's to justify them or not. You know, it, it just depends on, I guess, where you're standing. 
Yeah, that, that, that was nothing close to the worst targeting call I've ever seen in my life. So I'm not saying it was a bad call. It was just unfortunate. I don't like to see big momentum changes in games because of – I don't like to see teams gifted – yardage and points basically given points and it's not clemson's fault it, it really did it's it's a no you know, they, they didn't earn the points uh so yeah they, they and were, the thing is every time it every time that that clemson scored it was on a penalty that let their drive continue every time the first three scores they had they would have like to say they would have been shut out at halftime had the fish gate not been sure what it was but i'm not and i'm not saying that 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 I guess I am saying that maybe it, it sure, sure appeared that the SEC officials were biased. Now, really, if they was not, you know, yeah, but I'm see, telling you, the, I, I'm the, not, scooping, the scooping, the, the scooping score, that's hard, I'm not, to, that's I'm hard not, to miss. I'm not ready to say that about the SEC officials. I just say they did a poor job. I, 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 they did a poor I job. There, there really was a, did. to me, there was a clear running into the punter, not roughing the punter. That should have been called for five yards. Clemson still would have had to punt the football back to Ohio State. So that was a bad call. That one doesn't get brought up much, but Ohio State got called for roughing no. the punter. It was running into the punter. Any knucklehead could see that. And it would have just been five yards. And again, it was like a third and 12 or whatever. So Clemson would have had to punt again. And then you bring up the, you know, when a player catches the ball and for anybody that's not just listening, but watching both of his hands. When, when you catch the ball, like mid, like between the numbers and you have time to lift it up above your head, bring it down, turn, twist all the way around and take three steps. You certainly have possession of yeah, fo absolutely. football. Um, we make this. Yeah, way, how do you miss that? How we, do you miss that? We, we make this way too difficult. Yeah. I could see them missing it if we didn't have replay. You know that those yeah, things happen so saying. fast. You can look at it ten times. But in replay, it's obvious. It's just, it's moronic. It was just yeah. a, a, a blown call by the officials, and they just—it was a poorly officiated game. And even despite all it that, really Ohio was. State still should have won the game. They still should have overcome it. They still had J.K. Dobbins they drop a touchdown chance. pass and things like that. So they still yep. blew they the still game. Had, you're right. Um, and they but still had a miscommunication right. between. Chance. Fields and Olave uh -huh. miscommunicated because they had driven down to the 20 yard line uh, to win the game. Right. So, uh, despite all that, Ohio State, you know, who knows what they could have beaten Clemson by? They could have beaten them by four touchdowns. Oh, like they did the next year. Oh, maybe. Exactly. <laughs> and, 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 and because we did dominate Clemson that game, we really did. I don't care what scoreboard says. If you watch the game physically, uh, 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 scheme, why in every uh, way, way you look at it, Ohio State dominates the final score, of course. <laughs> but uh, I, I and I do, I really gave us a chance against LSU if for no other reason than we knew Joe Burrow as well. So, but uh, look, I know you got a busy, uh, a lot of people trying to call. I so appreciate you taking my call, uh, Mark. I really do. And uh, don't forget to subscribe and like, folks. And uh, Mark, I hope you have a great evening. Well, I appreciate the uh, call. Have a good night. Oh, thank you. You too. Bye-bye. And uh, I think for you guys that uh, watch on a regular basis and know what I'm all about, you'll understand this statement. Of course, I hate that that happened against Ohio State. Of course, obviously. You don't want your team getting screwed. But for the sake of this channel and this show, I really wish that would have happened to somebody else because I would – I would still be saying the same exact thing. If that would have been Georgia that got screwed against Clemson in a national semifinal game, I'd still be saying the same thing. And I'd be just as adamant about it. I wouldn't care that they got screwed, except for I want to see justice on the field. But I would be arguing the same thing. Uh, it just happened to be against Ohio State. And I, I think even reasonable Clemson fans can watch that game and say, yeah, we got we got the benefit of the calls like, and, and what's funny is that it wasn't just one like really bad call. It was like four. again, I'm going to put them in a range, not all just flat out bad calls, but questionable to bad. 
and they all went Clemson's way. And that's just the way it is. And that's really not debatable. They all went Clemson's way. Clemson still made the plays in the fourth quarter and on the last drive, or the second to last drive, the last offensive drive for Clemson to win the game. Uh, Ohio State could have stopped them down at whatever they had, the five-yard line, the 10-yard line, but they let Travis Etienne be a pass receiver suddenly. He didn't do anything on the ground. Uh, He became a pass receiver, and Clemson was extremely resourceful to win that game. And every analyst said after the game, Ohio State should have won that game. They were the better team. They were more dominant. They were just better along the lines of scrimmage, but they blew the game. They blew the game. All right. And that's kind of a double-sided situation in terms of analysis. When I mentioned like J.K. Dobbins drops a touchdown pass. That's not Clemson's fault. They benefited from it. Clemson didn't make a play. That could have been Kansas's defense on the field. And J.K. Dobbins still dropped the ball. So Clemson didn't make a play. There's a difference between making plays and then being gifted. So when people bring up turnovers sometimes, uh, some people bring them up as just luck. Well, we shouldn't have turned the ball over four times. That was lucky. Well, sometimes they're lucky. Sometimes they're really good plays by the defense. I've got to look at each turnover and tell you what I think they are because sometimes defenses get turnovers because they're great players making great plays. They're whipping the left tackle off the edge and getting to the quarterback and getting a strip sack. That's a great play by the defense. The the receiver, the corner baiting the quarterback and breaking on the ball and picking it off, that's a great play by the defense. When Clint Sterner in 1998 at Arkansas versus Tennessee just turns around and drops the ball on the field and Tennessee recovers, well, that's not a great play by the defense. That's just a miscue that they took advantage of. It's not their fault. They shouldn't apologize for it. Clemson shouldn't have to apologize for taking advantage of bad calls and Ohio State miscues that they did not force unforced errors. It's like in a tennis match. If the other dude double faults, we could have had a mannequin standing here and he would have double faulted. I didn't do anything that didn't prove me to be a great tennis player. He double faulted, but I don't have to apologize for it. That's part of the game. 